Hi, this video is a lecture taken from my online course about data engineering on Microsoft Azure and I hope it helps you learn more about data engineering. In this lecture, we are going to create our first lookup activity. If you look at the following SQL statement, you will see that it returns almost 70,000 rows. It contains all the cities that are available in the database wide world in portals. But what if you just want to process a subset of the data? That means you want to have the same query, but each time that your pipeline runs, you just want to process data from specific cities. One bad option will be to go ahead and then hard code the city IDs inside your pipeline, which means every time you want to run the pipeline for a different city, you have to do a new deployment of your pipeline. Of course, this is not a great idea. For example, if I reduce it to a specific city like this one and run it, I'll only get 102 rows. A way to accomplish that goal is to use a lookup activity. And with the lookup activity, we can then go ahead and provide a file that contains some metadata, such as the city ID and the city name. And later inside Data Factory, we can retrieve these IDs and add them automatically here as parameter. Therefore, we don't have to deploy it the pipeline again each time you want to process it, information about a new city. We can then just go ahead, modify it, the city to process.json file and add the new information in there. So now let's go into the Azure portal and then create the lookup activity. Now back into Azure Data Factory, we are going to create the pipeline, create a new pipeline, give it a name, let's say pipeline sales per city that's fine now we can add a lookup activity to it you can search for lookup or you can go down to the general section scroll down and there's the lookup activity put it there now you must give it a name we are going to name it lookup cities to process for example first we will leave everything as default go down to the settings and then select the data set that points to the city to process json file now you can preview that as you can see this shows us exactly the same information as in the JSON file that you uploaded, this is fine. We leave everything as it is. Also here, now you can debug the pipeline. This is running, should not take that much time. And here you can see the input and the output. Let's take a look at the input. This is the definition of the data set that we use as input. And this is the output. You can see now we have a city name and a city ID. However, you can only see the first row here. So let's change that. We know that our JSON file has more than one row, as you can see here. But if you take a look at the output, you can see only one row. So let's change that. Let's go back here under settings. Down here, you must uncheck the first row option. Now you can debug the pipeline again. Let's take a look at the output again. Now you have the count is three. So we have three entities or three objects in the output. And this corresponds to the content of the JSON file. Let's go ahead and publish that first. These are the changes we create a new pipeline. You can see the status is a new change. So let's publish that. Now that the pipeline is successfully published and we know that our lookup activity is running just fine and returning the object that we need. Let's take a look into the documentation of a lookup activity. As I, as I already said, you can use a lookup activity to dynamically determine which object to operate on. In this case, we are using the lookup activity to determine on which cities we want to create our reports. And the big reason why we should use lookup activity is because we can use them instead of hard coding the object name. This is the main reason why we can do that. Now, once that you create a lookup activity, 
the output of a lookup activity can be a single tone value or an array of attribute. When you keep the first row option clicked, what we saw earlier, where was it? Here under settings, when you leave this clicked, the output is a single tone object. This is what you have here, a single tone value or an array of attribute which can be consumed in a subsequent copy transformation or control flow activity like a for each activity. In the next lecture, we are then going to create a for each activity which is going to create some file for each city. So let's go ahead and do that. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also like the entire course. The course covers multiple Azure services that you can use to perform data engineering. For example, you learn how to build a data pipeline using Azure Data Factory or how to use Azure Key Vault to secure access to your data. Also, with Azure Synapse Analytics, you will learn how to build a modern data warehouse in the cloud or how to run Apache Spark code using Azure Synapse Analytics. And it covers other topics such as Azure SQL databases and much more. So check it out using the link below. Thank you.